Well, it's Saturday morning, and I've got to tell you, it has been quite a week. First, Alison Rose went as the boss of NatWest after the board tried to keep her. That was extraordinary because she'd broken most of the rules on the FCA rule book, but that didn't seem to matter to Sir Howard Davis and the board. No, they had every confidence in her. Uh, and of course, when the world found out, they still backed her. Uh, there was uproar. Clearly, number 10 and number 11 were not happy. Uh, neither was, was always anybody in the press. And later on that night, they reconvened another emergency board meeting and she was gone. I also got a pretty full apology from the journalist Simon Jack and indeed from Deborah Turness, the CEO of BBC News. Now, some say, well, the BBC should have apologised a bit quicker after I'd published the full facts about the prejudice and bile uh, that exists within Coots. But do you know what? To get an apology from the BBC is a pretty rare thing. The last one was Sir Cliff Richard, and he had to go to law to get it. So I was pleased the BBC did apologise. And then later on in the week, the invisible man, Peter Flavel, the boss of Coots, a man who'd ignored my emails, literally ignored three emails, including one that said, if I couldn't find other banking facilities, I'd turn up at the bank on the day the account was expiring with a secure call van to collect the cash. Uh, so I was pretty clear. I warned him we'd go public, but no, he didn't listen. Perhaps too rich, too arrogant to even bother or care. He went. And then we had on Friday morning the NatWest figures. Um, and yeah, they're making billions and billions and billions. Of course they are, because they don't pay much interest out, but they charge plenty for mortgages. Um, and all of this chaired by Sir Howard Davis, who said, I'm not going, I'm going to stay in position. Well, I think he was wrong. Wrong to have backed Alison Rose. And remember, this guy was the boss of the FCA, the regulator, the predecessor to the current FCA. How somebody who ran regulation of financial services could think it right initially to back someone who'd broken plenty of the rules, including the most fundamental rule of banking, which is client confidentiality, is quite beyond me. He then said that she'd been a great leader, which means, of course, that she gets her payoff. She'll get £2.43 million as a payoff. Well done, Sir Howard. But worst of all, what absolutely puts the tin lid on the whole thing and why Howard Davis has to go is he's announced a review. There'll be a review into why my accounts were closed and the leak, and that review will settle the matter. And who does Sir Howard appoint? He appoints Travers Smith, a city legal company. And the emeritus chair and chief advisor of that company is someone called Chris Hale. And Chris Hale, during the referendum campaign, said that the Brexit campaign was racist, xenophobic and nostalgic. Yes, that's what he said. Almost exactly the same words that were used about me in the document that Coots had compiled on me. There is no way on earth these people can be allowed to conduct this review given their position on Brexit and Brexiteers is previously stated. It's even worse than the usual whitewash we expect from big global financial institutions. But I'm sure Sir Howard is very smug this morning because he's appointed one of his mates and thinks he's going to get away with it. Well, he can't be allowed to get away with it. We need, and I've said this three or four times already, we need to get to the absolute truth of what happened. That subject access request I got back, I think was a very limited amount of information. Rumours have reached my ears that within the bank there was much worse on me than that. So look, so far so good in some ways to the government, the city minister saying that people should not be debanked because of their perfectly legal political views. But the biggest shareholder in this group is still us, the taxpayer. We own 39% of it. The government holds it in trust for us. And I think that Sir Howard Davis absolutely has to go. He's leaving in May of next year. Anyway, let's find a successor. PDQ and see if we can't get NatWest back on track. I'm hoping and praying that this was the week that woke corporatism. I'm hoping the tide has turned on it this very week. And I'll be announcing later a website where people who've been debanked from whatever institution can log on with us so that we can form a really powerful pressure group. Because frankly, what is going on as the banks make billions 
and people's lives and businesses are being ruined is completely unacceptable. And right at the top of the tree is Sir Howard Davis. He has to go.